can you beat the new Presage mission without jumping? That is the very question I'll be answering in this video. Now we all probably know what Presage is, a seasonal mission where you venture into a cabal ship full of scorn and defeat a boss known as the Locus of Communion. Above all though, it features a lot of jumping puzzles. So what would happen if we don't jump? That's right, in this video I'll be telling the story of how I attempted to beat the Presage mission without pressing the spacebar a single time, and how you can try it too because everyone wants an extremely impractical and inefficient way to complete an already pretty difficult mission. So to start off, I'll be going over some of the movement options and text that I'll be using to make this run happen. Firstly, for the majority of the run, I'll be using Top Tree Dawnblade Warlock. This is because they have Ikara Stash, which gives the player more options to cross gaps without jumping. That being said though, we aren't allowed to jump, which makes the jump and Ikara Stash movement combo tech completely impossible. But, the way the physics of this work is that if you run straight into an object and then dash into a wall with the right angle, you can gain a small amount of height. This can also be paired with the Wings of Sacred Dawn exotic chess piece, allowing me to glide after using all my dashes. The second subclass I'll be utilising is Stasis. This is because it has Glacial Grenade, which can be thrown at the feet to bounce you up slightly. Of course, this isn't as good as a normal jump, but uh, we aren't exactly allowed to use those. The exotic I switched to for this was the Eye of Another World exotic helmet, so that my grenade could recharge quicker. It's not essential, but it definitely made the run a lot more tolerable. Also, another quick note is that I'll attempt to use zero Dawnblade supers for this challenge, as it essentially allows you to fly even without jumping first. This to me defeats the whole point of the challenge in the first place, so if I can help it I won't be using these. Now for the run. The first obstacle was getting to the first platform. To start with, I attempted to cross the gap using the boxes on the ramp, however, it quickly became apparent that this would not work, I just wasn't high enough. So I looked up and immediately spotted a floating box. How convenient. The next problem was getting to it. At this point I wasn't fully familiar with all the jumpless movement tech in the game, so getting up to the box was pretty challenging. It turns out you can Icarus stash off of a pipe in the wall to reach the first box, and then spam it again to mantle onto the next box. Then I made two more precise jumps and I was on top of the floating box. Now I would later find an easier strategy to make this jump involving another floating object, but the method I used to initially make the gap involved a series of sword swings and Icarus dashes followed by a nice glide to reach the other side. That first jump took 20 minutes. Nice. For the following two platforms, I switched to the Salvation's Grip Exotic Grenade Launcher to create myself some platforms. This was a little tricky, but after a few attempts and a hot swap back to a sword, I made it all the way to the sixth platform. This was where the run got interesting. I assumed the next area would be unreachable, and that I would have to cast this video idea into the Shadow Realm besides top 6 linear fusion rifles and 10 new exotic weapons that would change Destiny's meta forever. However, when messing around with the Icarus stash, I accidentally discovered a tiny invisible ledge that you can stand on. Making it to this ledge using just Icarus stash is very difficult, but not impossible. Once I made it to the ledge, I used the wall and some random support beams to reach another platform further into the jumping puzzle. From there, I echo stashed up the side of an almost vertical wall, no idea how that works by the way, and glided down to the final two platforms. At this point I realised this run might actually be possible. After continuing through the ship for a bit, I managed to climb up into a small room by yet again abusing Icarus stash. Then came the pipe. Now when I first encountered this pipe, I legitimately thought that this would be the end of my run. This was the point at which I remembered Stasis, everyone's favourite PvP subclass. I also remembered that the Ice Wall Grenade could actually give you a vertical boost to get over objects. N not a jump, a vertical boost. There's a big difference. Anyways, I waited for a Stasis Grenade and got over the pipe, no problem. At some point you will encounter the Spore Buff, and while it is pretty cool the first time you play through it, it's an absolute pain to deal with if you're going for a no jumping run, as you do of course. Luckily the spore mechanic does not make the following room any more difficult. To beat this room, I first tried dashing onto a pipe on the left side of the room and then onto some plant type things in the middle. I tried to get onto the pipe on the middle back of the room, but I couldn't quite make the hop. As an alternative, I tried climbing the plants on the opposite side of the room and it actually worked out much better. I made it into the pipe and then around the top of the room to the exit vent. Then I switched to stasis briefly to hop into the next corridor. The next section I was absolutely terrified of when I started this challenge, a completely vertical room full of parkour, but this actually turned out to be one of the most fun rooms to route in the entire challenge. Not the most fun one though, we'll get to that bit later. 
I used an ice grenade to get into the room and then started slamming my guardian into walls and mashing the X button to see what I could dash off of. Eventually, I found some machinery in the back right corner that could be used as a stepping stone to get onto yet another pipe. I ascended a few more platforms, utilising elements of the room such as metal support beams and bits of machinery. Once I was at the second to last ledge, I hopped onto the pipe and fell right through the spinning metal section. Turns out the pipe was just a cabal illusion. Uh, unlucky me, I guess? After actually making it to the final platform, I made my way into the room with the giant deadly electric walls. Killing the enemies in this challenge was actually a lot harder than I originally thought, and not because of the enemies themselves. I would always accidentally hit my jump button as a natural reaction to getting attacked, especially by screams. Following a few incidents like this, I rebound my jump button to Z so that I was no longer pranked by the screams. It's worth noting that at this point I was relying on the enemies dropping heavy ammo to get to the next section. If none dropped, it was a reset. I got the spore buff and Icarus dashed and sword swung to the opposite ledge. After dropping down and killing some more adds, I managed to climb up to the pillar in the middle of the room and reach the top. Surprisingly, that one took me a while to come up with. I then got on top of the broken cabal turret and used it to cross the gap to the other side. In the next room, I had to deal with yet more screeps and make some more precise jumps. I used Icarus Dash to get onto the pipe and waited for a stasis grenade to bounce up onto the ledge with the next switch. Then I used various objects in the room to get to the back platform. Now before I show you how I did the next room, I've got to expose the Bungie developers real quick. You know those electric walls that are all throughout this section? They don't actually necessarily kill you. Instead, they pretty much just yeet you into the ceiling. You probably see where this is going. You can actually use the wall to cross this gap. Now, I found this completely by accident, but once I found it, the previous sections got a whole lot easier. Using the wall, I made my way over to the switch and then back to the fuse in the previous room. From there, I got back onto the platform and then dropped down into the rubbish compactor encounter. The most effective way to beat this room that I found is by clearing all the adds first. Since I couldn't jump, finding the fuses was actually pretty difficult. If the walls got too close, I would run to the back wall and wait for them to open up again. A relatively well-known glitch for this encounter. It's very useful for solo runs, so I'd recommend researching it. But not right now, I need the average reduction, please. After clearing the room, you can drop down into another corridor and use both Icarus Dash and Stasis Grenade to reach the first combat room. Now fighting enemies without jumping is actually a lot more difficult than one might imagine, as hinted earlier. You've got to stay at the back of the room, in a corner which is especially problematic when there's like 20 ravagers that want to burn you alive. However, using Karnstein armlets and bottom tree void lock, I managed to survive the onslaught of scorn and clear the room. In case any of you are curious, the loadout I usually use for this section consists of the new Season of the Chosen Bow, uh, no idea what it's called, I can't be bothered to look, Succession with the perk Reconstruction and the Lament. Just some quick advice for any of you people looking to solo flawless this mission at some point. To get onto the ledge leading to the next room, I used Icarus Dash. I, I know, big surprise. There really isn't much to say about this next room really, I just sort of picked off enemies with my weapons and meleeed the Ravagers if they got too close. After clearing this room, I made my way over to the platforms, reaching the hangar. Now this, this was my favourite room to solve in the entire mission. It takes every element of the room and combines them all together to make the jump actually possible. Upon getting to this room the first time, I will admit that it did look impossible. There was nothing on the walls around the exit, and no wall that allowed me to get to the hanging platform in the middle of the room. Looking around, I observed some racks on the opposite wall. If I could get onto those platforms, I could glide all the way to the exit door, possibly. Using the various boxes and objects on the left side of the room, I managed to dash onto the large ship. With some carefully timed Icarus dashes, I got onto a circular metal support and swung over to the racks. Step 1 complete. I then bounced off the items on the shelves to reach the top. However, my accomplishment was extremely short-lived because there was no way that this was high enough to reach the door until I spotted another support beam. Apparently you can get onto this support beam in the middle of the room. Then I bounced off of a support beam for a support beam, and got on top of the support beam. I, I think I said support beam at least four times that sentence, wow. Anyways, I got onto it and dropped down into the door to the next room. There wasn't anything that difficult for the next couple of rooms. However, the spore mechanic would once again threaten the entire run. I only said that to be dramatic, it wasn't really a problem before. Clearing the room itself wasn't an issue. I used the pipes at the back to make it through the electric wall, and then flicked the switches to get the spore buff available. 
Getting out of the room was the issue. You see, the thing about not jumping is that rooms in Destiny are solely designed around a Guardian's ability to jump. Not jumping requires very inefficient and very slow techniques to get through the rooms. This is a problem when you're under a time restraint, like, I don't know, the Egregore Link buff, for example. For this room, the route I used consisted of dashing off of some metal plating and then onto the first ledge before climbing some plants and sword swinging across. Doing this, I could barely make it through the door after at least 15 minutes of trying. The next few rooms were no different to a normal playthrough, but after clearing them, I eventually got to the final jumping puzzle of the encounter. Again, this featured the spore buff, but unfortunately, it would pretty much cause me to fail this challenge. Let me explain. So crossing the room to get to the final door is technically possible. By using features of the room combined with dashes and sword swings, I could easily destroy the fuse and make it back to the initial platform. The issue is, the Egregore Link buff only lasts for 15 seconds. To get to the door in the middle of the room to refresh the buff, it would take 6 Icarus dashes. Each set of 2 dashes takes 5 seconds to recharge, so if you do the maths, it doesn't look very good. By the time the dashes have recharged, the buff will already have been gone. I tried for at least two hours on this last bit, testing strategies involving all aspects of the game. I tried Salvation's grip, I tried making the jumps with two Icarus dashes, I even tried rerouting the entire mission by going out of bounds to open the final door for me. All my attempts were in vain, so I had to bite the bullet and use a super. Now this still isn't technically a jump either, but as mentioned at the start of the video, the Dawnblade Super just defeats the whole point of the challenge in the first place. But, I found another way. It just occurred to me when writing the script for this video that I only said that I couldn't use Dawnblade Supers. There was nothing present about other Supers. YouTube viewers, I present to you Chaos Reach. That also didn't work. However, testing with Chaos Reach in a private Crucible lobby, I discovered a strange interaction between sword swinging and swinging in the air. By swinging off of a platform, the game will actually reset your sword swing cooldown and you can make it across far more gaps without using as many Icarus dashes. This was absolutely crucial if I wanted to get to the first spore door. My new method involved using two Icarus dashes to get onto the platform to the right, then waiting for them to recharge, and doing the double sword swing technique to make it across both gaps using only two Icarus dashes. Now this took way longer than I'm willing to admit, but I did eventually make the gap, and I was now at the boss room. The fight was actually surprisingly pretty easy. Upon flicking the three levers, on first damage phase I could usually just stick a few anarchy shots onto the boss by dropping down onto a pipe. For the second damage phase, I ran into a bit of trouble. The boss could not be hit from any of the angles given by the lower pipe. The only way I could get the boss to move was to drop down into the room itself. Problem being, you can't exactly get back up because the walls at the bottom of the shafts are inverted. This actually played to my advantage though. Here's how. As you can see from my amazing MS Paint drawing, if you attach a horizontal object 90 degrees to the inverted wall, you can essentially create a ramp. This allowed me to reach the bottom pipe, and then Icarus dash back up to the top. Now you might be asking, how do I create a horizontal object? Salvation's grip. I could create a crystal that acted as a ramp for me to get back up to safety. This made the boss fight super easy. I was able to proceed to the final room. And against all odds, beat the mission. So, to answer the question. Yes, you can indeed beat Presage without jumping a single time. It just takes five times as long. Also, I've only just realised that I've been pronouncing the name of the mission wrong the entire time. It's actually pronounced Presage, but I like my version better. Now I'm well aware that if this video does well, I can already see messages in the comments joking about beating the mission without starting the game, or without moving. The former isn't really possible, but uh, the second option? New video out soon. With that being said, I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.